so yeah, I'm gonna just jump every day from, uh, you know, that I'm doing something from the website so you can hopefully follow along. Um, so I'm just scrolling down to the schedule and we're gonna go over basic R today. You'll notice that there's the R and the R markdown associated with the lecture. This can sometimes be helpful for you know, running code on, on your end or uh, you know, practicing taking notes in a script. Uh, so I definitely encourage that if you're, if you're interested, but I'll just be following along with the lecture slides here. Okay, so we're talking about basic R today. And you may, unless you were super lucky, you may have run into some of the common new user frustrations yesterday. And just want to kind of highlight a couple of these that you may run into. Definitely not, uh, you know, that you're doing something wrong. It's just some, something that questions that can come up periodically. Um, first is that there's different versions of software because this because R is maintained by the community. People are kind of putting out new versions of packages, even new versions of R pretty regularly. And sometimes they don't always play nice. Some of the functions kind of change names. Um, and so that's something to be aware of that, that sometimes that can cause issues, but hopefully uh, we're all working on the same version of R hopefully and uh, the most recent version of packages. So that should not hopefully be a problem, but might be something that you encounter in your future work. Um, data type problem. So we'll talk about this a, a lot more uh, tomorrow and, and throughout the course, but data is going to be read into R and, and recognized as a certain type of variable or, or a certain type of data. Um, so is it is it a word? Is it a character? You know, true, false? What, what is it? Um, and sometimes R uh, doesn't guess correctly. And so that can cause problems down the road. Working directory problems. This is just when, when R can't find what you're looking for. So you have data somewhere on your computer. We don't know where maybe. Um, and R just doesn't know where to look for it. And we'll talk a little bit more about that today. And so hopefully, um, uh, hopefully we can, you know, avoid that problem. And finally, you know, I'm, I use R all the time, but I'm definitely guilty of this, that typos are, are not your friend. So we want to make sure that uh, we are recognizing that R is case sensitive. So the variables lowercase x, uppercase x are different. Um, and, you know, just if you spell something incorrectly, you know, you've assigned uh, a new variable called my variable, maybe one has an underscore and one doesn't, R is going to treat those as different things. Um, RSU can help with this a little bit because it has the ability to tab and autocomplete and it'll have a little drop down that shows you uh, kind of what you're looking at. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that can kind of help with spelling and, you know, I'm in favor of anything that makes my life easier. I don't have to type as much. So um, yeah, we'll definitely highlight that. Okay, and as we go forward through these slides, uh, you saw a little bit of this yesterday, but um, when we're talking about different code that you're gonna be using, it's gonna show up in this kind of gray um, and then like old timey typewriter font. Um, so hopefully that should be able to um, call it out to you and anything here, you know, that's something that you can put into your R console or your script. The output of whatever is right there that you'll see when you run this code will be directly under it. Um, so that way you can kind of see what the code is itself and what we expect the output to be when we're going over it in the lecture. Okay, so at its most basic level, R is uh, really useful as a calculator. So we can do a couple different operations, addition, multiplication, et cetera, and just evaluate those two plus two, two times four, uh, two to the third. And when you just type these into the console, R inherently thinks you want to print the result. So let me just swing over to are really quick. So that's what it's going to look like. We just enter it in and it'll give us the evaluation. 
hopefully everyone can see this okay. Yeah, we can see it. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> I have no idea what you can say. So, <laughs> all right. Um, so as you're following along, please feel free to open up R and use the R console as a calculator, play around with it, uh, you know, type in some numbers, do addition, subtraction, um, and definitely try like raising things to the power of whatever. I think that's super helpful sometimes. Um, parentheses, just like, you know, on a graphing calculator or something like that, tell you the order of operations. And sometimes it's helpful to find the remainder. You can actually do that with these uh, two percent symbols as well. Okay, and getting even more complicated, kind of showing you a few more examples. Um, definitely can do all of these things, or def definitely all of these equations as well. Um, and this last one, I just think this is really funny. This was a viral math problem from uh, maybe a couple of months ago, um, but. Basically, people on Facebook were arguing about what the answer was, but because you have the power of R, you don't have to worry about it. You can just type it in yourself. Okay, so if you're following along, try to go ahead and evaluate the following. What, what are these equations going to be as you run them in your console? So I'll go ahead and just do one of them. easy enough. Um, one thing I will point out is uh, just trying to be consistent in your formatting. So this kind of looks like negative three, uh, which could be confusing if you're kind of reading through. Um, so I try to make sure that whenever I'm doing operations, I include spaces. And R will basically, you can use as many spaces as you want. It's really just to help you kind of keep your code clean, easy to read. Um, I definitely think that's a good idea um, just to kind of make sure that, you know, it's, it's easy to look at. Commenting, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, but you can use the hashtag or the pound sign to make comments in an R script or in any chunk of R code. Um, this is useful if you need to remember later what something means or if you want to kind of tell your colleague this is what this does, <laughs> or this is what you need to run this. Um, they can be to the right of code. Um, you can use as many of these as you want. Okay, and let's talk just a little bit more about variables. So let's say you know you have an equation or a number you want to save for later and use it kind of later on in your in your code that you're writing. Um, so you can create variables in R um, and, you know, from files on your computer. R uses this kind of backward facing arrow. Um, so that's a less than and a dash uh, to assign variables to a variable name. And I also want to point out that you can use the equal, uh, but this is, it's more accepted in the R community to use this, um, this arrow symbol. And they do have slightly different meanings and usages, but um, for now, let's always try to use this one. Uh, you may see the equal sign in code if you, you know, kind of look things up on the internet or something. And just remember the variable names are case sensitive. So the, these two X's are actually different. So let's say I want to assign X is two. Okay, so I don't see any output. And that may seem kind of scary. Uh, you don't know kind of what's going on. Um, you don't get any message that it was saved. Uh, but sometimes in R, no, no information is a good thing. Um, so let's see what happens when I just type X. It's going to go ahead and print that for me. Okay, and so then uh, we'll talk a little bit more um, about this in a second, but you can also use it algebraically. So let's say I wanna do X plus two, I'm gonna get four because that X was uh, assigned to this value two up here. 
And again, I'm doing this kind of in the console, but if you wanted to make a script that would save all of this information, you can do that as well. Okay, so given that you know you all are working with really um, you know really important data in your day to day, uh, the most comfortable, familiar data type for you will be the data frame, and you can think of this as a spreadsheet. Um, you know, maybe even something that could you could see in Excel, right? You've got rows, you've got columns. Um, usually, rows are different subjects or observations, and columns are different variables for each of those. You know, height, weight blood pressure or something like that. However, in R, data frames are a little bit complicated. Um, so we'll get, we're going to start with simpler objects just to give you, you know, some intuition about these things going before we get into data frames a little bit more. Um, so these are, we're going to talk about what are called one dimensional classes, uh, which are referred to vector, as vectors. And so you can think of this as just a collection of variables or even one variable. Vectors um, can have multiple sets of observations, but each observation has to be the same class. And so, so what do I mean by that? Um, this is a way to describe the data type. And again, we'll get more into this a little bit later in the class, but um, X, remember I saved that as as two, uh, we can actually ask, you know, what is the class? What, how would we describe that variable? Um, so it's going to tell us that it's numeric if we ask for the class. But let's say we have something that's like a text string, you know, maybe in some data, it could be somebody's name. Um, that's going to be a different data class. And uh, this shows up as a character. So, so these couldn't be together in one vector because they're different classes. OK, so let's play around with this a little bit. Um, try assigning, if you're following along, try assigning your full name to an R variable called name. Okay, I'm going to do this over here. And remember that the new name is going to be on the left side. I'm going to use the arrow to indicate that I'm assigning it to a new variable. And anytime you have text in R, you're going to want to use quotation marks. Okay, so I'm going to do my name. Again, no output, not too bad, not scary. And just to make sure that, um, that it's saved correctly, I'm just going to type it and hit enter. There it is. OK, so you just saw that. OK, let's talk a little bit about the combine function. So hopefully you're going to be dealing with more data than just uh, one variable. Um, so we have this handy function, um, the combine function, which is just a C. And it collects, combines, joins, uh, single R variables or R objects into a vector. So basically stringing them along. And it's mostly used for creating vectors of numbers, uh, character strings, and other, other data. You can even combine data frames, but we're not going to talk much about that. Um, so let's say I want to combine all of these numbers and save them into a new variable called x. Because these are all numbers, I can also ask for the class of X, and it says that it's numeric. OK. OK, so let's try to put the combine function into action. Try assigning your first and last name as two separate character strings. So this is, you know, remember, it's in quotes, into a single vector called name2. OK. So I'm going to make name two. And again, that's going to be on the left-hand side of the arrow. So I'm assigning name two some values. The combine function, remember, that's the C. And I'll use quotes to do Ava. Then you're going to separate items by a comma. And then I'll put in my last name. I could even do, you know, 
something else here, my nickname or something. Okay, and it's kind of showing them a little bit separated. Um, and so this is the first element in that vector, and this is the second element. You see they're a little bit more separated than here where it's only one, one element in that, um, in that vector. Okay, just saw that. Okay, so sometimes you maybe want to get a little bit of information about your variables. One really handy function to do that is uh, length. And so you can get the length of vectors, you know, how many items are in there. Um, and um, it can work on basically a lot of different things that you might encounter in R. Um, so let's say, you know, I want to see, okay, well, um, how many names do I have? You know, do I have a, a ton of middle names that were stored in name two? You can go ahead and ask, um, what is the length of name two? Okay, it has two elements. And, you know, if I wanted to look at it, I could, but it has a first and, and last name. Makes sense. Okay, so I already gave away the answer uh, to this, but um, what do we expect the length of name this this first one to be? Okay, so so here I had uh, two elements, but if I ask for the length of name this first one, and you can see it's giving me suggestions and with these little purple tags of different variables that I've already kind of played around with in the environment. I'm just going to click that. Um, and hopefully should make sense that this is, there's just one variable in that um, vector. Okay, makes sense. Okay, um, one of the cool things about R is it can save you a little bit of time. And, you know, let's say you um, want to take a vector of numbers, like a whole bunch of them, and you want to add two to each one. You can do that really easily uh, with this kind of algebraic way of doing things. So um, in our uh, first list of numbers, it's just added two to each one. In this case, it's just multiplied um, each one. And you can even um, add a set a vector to a, to a previous vector. Okay, with that, let's practice a little bit. So um, let's go back to the website and look at the lab. So that is all the way down here, um, right here. Okay, hopefully everyone had fun kind of playing with um, R to start. Um, we're going to go over a few more slides in the lecture, and then I think we'll probably be at break time. Um, so then when we come back, we'll um, kind of jump straight to the second part of the lab. That sounds good to folks. Okay. Oh, I have to start at the beginning. One second. Okay. Okay, so when working with variables, um, we kind of got to this a little bit, um, up to this point, a little bit in the lab. Um, but things like algebra can only be performed on numbers. So, you know, what would we even do? What would algebra on, on my name look like? Uh, kind of makes sense that we can't do that. So, um, let me, I lost my R window one second. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so so my character times three, you know, what would that look like? Yeah, doesn't make any sense. It's my character is something with quotations. Okay, um, so let's say I want to save a vector that I'm actually modifying. I'm adding uh, this vector right here. I'm adding that to an existing variable and I want to save that as a new thing. Um, I can do that. And we talked a little bit about this in my lab, but any time you, um, you reassign, you're effectively overwriting that. So if I had had you know, something, you know, my huge data set that I was really worried about keeping, I had named it Y before, and then I did this, uh, it's going to overwrite that. Uh, so just be careful about that. Always saves kind of the last thing we're looking at. Okay. Um, so you can get more information about your variables um, than just class. So we use the class function. Um, an additional function, str, gives you a little bit. Uh, I really like this one because it gives you information about the structure of the object. It tells us it's numeric. Um, it tells us it's got one through four objects in it or variables in it. And it gives us a little preview of what those values actually are. Um, so yeah, this tells us that X is a numeric vector and it tells us the length, um, you know, a little bit more information. Okay, so we did um, a lot. Uh, we've talked about maybe creating a new script um, using R as a calculator, um, assigning values to variables, and performing algebra on numeric uh, variables, um, also using the combine function. Um, so if um, we didn't go over it, um, just a reminder to create a new script, you can go to this button right here and create a new R script or create a new R markdown. So if I create a new R script, it's just giving me um, a blank template. Or if I create a markdown, it's going to ask me about some information, you know, what I want to call it, um, and give me something that kind of looks like the labs. So it's got the R chunks, it's got place for me to make notes, all of that. Okay. Um, so any questions up to this point? Uh, yeah, Eva, we had a couple in the chat. Okay. One was cool. about, about what the environment is. Maybe we can show and discuss. Yeah, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so it says what it, what's called the environment, what's that showing? Um, okay, so as I'm kind of chugging along through my script, um, I'm saving and running new variables, right? Um, so these are left over from the lab, but it's showing that I have a, a variable called both. It tells me a little bit about it. I have a variable called my character um, and my number or my num. Um, so these are all variables that are basically in memory. And so if I do both, you know, I've, I've got a variable called that. I can do stuff with it. Um, you know, my num, I can do more stuff with that as well. Um, but let's say I want to take something out of my environment. I, I don't want that in memory anymore. Let's, let's clean things up. I'm going to hit this broom button. That'll kind of erase all of my variables. It's kind of scary. Um, and so now if I try to do both, it's like, um, I don't have that object. That's, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so it's effectively just things you're working with um, at any given time. And then um, we also have a question about, um, I, I'm a little confused actually, Katie, about this question, but um, 
I think it's asking the dim about the dimensions of a matrix um, and, and wondering like what, what gets printed out. Um, so perhaps Katie, you tried using the dim function, is that correct? Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so I've um, added uh, a new variable to the environment um, and I'm gonna run this str function on it. Um, it's just telling me, you know, these are the dimensions. It's one, a, you know, a vector one through five. Um, it's a character type. And then it gives me a little bit of a preview of the, the items. Um, in this case, it's a vector, so it's just saying there's one through five elements in it. But, but yeah, you can kind of think about it in that way. Um, maybe we can show Iris. Or yeah, something like that. yeah. So like there's a data set I was showing my lab called cars. It's just got two columns here. It's a data frame, very, very simple table. Um, if I do str on that, Um, it just looks a little bit different. It's not giving me um, the dimensions so much as it's giving me the different columns. It's giving me kind of a preview of that and telling me that it's numeric. Yeah, a little bit different when you're working with a table. And we'll be going through um, working with tables in much more detail later, and we'll show you ways of of looking at the dimensions and looking at how many rows and, and columns we have for that as well. Um, and thank you for your question. Yeah, and then we also had a question about the history tab of the, yeah. And so- Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, I think um, it looks like Grant um, chimed in with an answer. I think that's totally right. Um, it shows your old commands. You can recreate um, some things. So like, let's say, um, okay, let's say I like clean up my environment. Um, I don't have my character anymore, but I do have this. So I could copy that and, and basically have it in the console again. Um, but it's, again, it's not great to rely on that because sometimes um, it gets erased for whatever reason. And, you know, you don't want to be constantly kind of scrolling through it. Um, hopefully that makes, makes sense. But yeah, for quick and easy, like, oh, I want to repeat something, um, you can do that, or you can use like the up arrow um, to see what you did previously. Yeah, and that can be really helpful if you had an error <laughs> and you want to modify. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, let's say, uh, you know, I'm doing like str my, and I have a typo or something. It's like, oh, that's wrong. Let me just go up and fix it. I can do that. Okay. Um, so I think with that, um, if you have any more questions, please drop them in the Slack or in the chat. Um, but we'll take a break and we're a little over. So let's come back at um, 9.42, so 10 minutes. All right. So I think we had some questions about kind of what was going on in the second part of the lab. So let's um, walk through just a little bit of that. Okay. Um, so I think uh, this was, uh, this first question was getting at this idea. Let me clear this real quick. Um, getting at this idea that you can't do algebra on characters. Um, so if I want to do Ava, I can't do that, right? It's not, what would that even be? Um, so that's getting at that. Um, the vector, um, the vectors that we're creating here, um, when we actually do addition on those, so X, Y, when we do addition on those, you can see that the first variable 
in both X and Y is being added. Second variable in both X and Y is being added, et cetera. So it's kind of um, works in a predictable way. Okay. And so for this one, um, let's not mess with this code. This is just doing something uh, that we'll talk about later. Um, but we're saving the first five items in Y. Okay. Oops. Actually, let's run that again. First five items. So it's just dropped that 60. Okay. And what happens when we try to add those together? Okay, it does gives us an answer, but it also gives us a warning message. And this is because uh, these are different lengths. So it's trying to add something that is of a length six to something that is a length, uh, oops, sorry, that was Z actually, <laughs> uh, length five. Okay, so it's kind of confused what to do. So instead of adding, nothing, it circles back around and adds a 10 there. So the 10 was the first element of that, of that Z variable. Okay, so um, the next steps are just uh, actually appending a, a new number onto Z. And so now when both are six, um, six numbers long, the addition works kind of more as we expect because both have six. Uh, so you can add the sixth um, item to the sixth item for each of, of those vectors. Okay, so any um, overall questions about um, this before we move on to data IO, data input output. Yeah, so it, this is kind of confusing. So the addition symbol, um, if you've worked in anything like Python or other languages, um, sometimes that means the same thing as that combined function. But if you're just trying to kind of tack, the combined function is really useful if you're like thinking, okay, I want to tack on more numbers or I want to append another uh, vector of characters. Um, so if I do something like combine my character and I want to append like um, onto there, I can do that. So um, basically like if I had two lists, um, I could do that too. So I could do my character once more and it's sort of appending in that way versus yeah, the addition, it's not really like, it's, it's addition says to R that you're trying to do algebra, that you're trying to do math. Yeah. Okay, and so we have a comment from Carrie um, in the chat says, you missed the first day. Um, definitely try to uh, catch up where you can. Um, and uh, we, we talked a lot about kind of like the setup and, and what R markdown is, what a script is, that stuff. Um, so definitely try to check that out. Um, so that the kind of way that we're working is not as scary, right? Working with scripts, working with our markdown files and kind of where everything is. 